Hi everyone, I'm Dara Sell, and thanks for joining me in the first ever episode of the Wizards Weekly Catch-Up. Just to give you a little introduction to the podcast, every week I'm going to be uploading a new one, basically recapping everything important that happened during the week. In today's episode, I'm going to be looking back over 2020, so let's get into it. There were two big things that flooded all the news channels at the beginning of 2020. The first one was the Australian wildfires, and the second one was the World War Three threats. Now both of those, they did seem massive at the time, but now they seem like years ago, which is crazy. Over the course of the year, SpaceX had conducted 26 missions, which actually beats their previous record, which they set in 2018, which is 21 missions. The reason it was on the news quite late last year was because it's had its 100th mission. Obviously, the main thing on the news for most of 2020 was COVID, which I know no one wants to hear any more talk about. Um, But I just wanted to talk about the good things that have come out of the lockdown. So many people learned to make a new dish or meal during lockdown. A lot of people talked to distant family members and old friends that they hadn't talked to for ages. And did you notice a lot of people becoming calmer and more relaxed during lockdown? Well, it wasn't just because they weren't stuck at work. Neurological research actually shows that when we wander through greenery, our brain shifts and we become less hyper, more calm and more alert to our surroundings. So as more people start to go on longer walks and become more physically active, this change in our brains quietened our minds and improved our emotional well-being. Now, let's talk about Marcus Rashford, who's become a household name across the UK. Not that he wasn't before, but for non-football lovers, he may not have been. The reason he became a household name this year was because he campaigned for free school meals for any child that needed it, and he succeeded in forcing the government to do it. 2020 was a big year for puppies. One in four owners admitted to buying one with very little research, and more than two in five people bought a puppy to be their COVID companion. It it is quite heartwarming. Obviously, this surge in pandemic puppy purchases came with a downside, because nearly one in four puppy buyers have admitted that they could have unknowingly bought from a puppy farm, and a fifth don't know whether their dog will be able to fit their lifestyle after lockdown. Uh, when they go back to work and their children go back to school. Now, I'm not sure if their worries are that much of a big deal because I feel like 2020 showed a lot of people that they can work from home, they can do their meetings over video call, they can do lessons over video call, and I know a lot of people have been more productive working from home. So many things happened around the world in 2020, but I can't cover everything, so I think it's time to move on to the next section. This is the Wizards Weekly Catch-Up. So I do need to talk about magic, and 2020 was quite a big year for magicians from the very start, especially for TV magicians. Dynamo kicked the year off with an excellent three-part series, Beyond Belief, which aired in April. He travelled to quite a few different countries for this, and throughout the series he tells us about the battles he's had with his health over the last few years. Now all the effects on his original series, Magician Impossible, were really good, but I have to say This series made him seem like he had supernatural powers. A month later, Justin Willman returned to Netflix with Magic for Humans Season 3. If you haven't watched it, it's another street magic programme where Willman performed really strong effects while still keeping the show's atmosphere really light and fun. The last thing I'm going to talk about before moving on to another section is Ascension. David Blaine is known for his amazing street magic TV specials and especially for the crazy stunts that he does, like when he did a 44 day fast and when he was stuck in an ice block for a few days. Now his latest stunt was Ascension, in which he got a lot of massive balloons and used them to fly for nearly 5 miles. If you haven't watched it, go onto YouTube and watch it right now, or after you finish the podcast. Okay, let's talk about music for a bit. I've got here the two most popular songs of the year, according to the official charts. Number two was Dance Monkey by Tones and I. And number one, if you haven't guessed it yet, was Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. And Blinding Lights was the most streamed song on Spotify with almost 1.6 billion streams over the course of the year. I couldn't get all the stats about TV shows, but I can tell you the most popular Netflix shows in 2020. According to Digital Spy, the most watched show on Netflix this year was Money Heist, 
season 4, with 65 million streams. This was closely followed by Tiger King and The Queen's Gambit. Now, on a side note, if you haven't watched The Queen's Gambit yet, I insist you do. It's great. Now, the Crown and Emily in Paris were both very popular during the year, but these stats weren't available to look at. For the first time ever, the Oscar for Best Picture went to an international feature film, which was Parasite. Now, another big thing that happened in the film industry was that Lashana Lynch was announced to be the first female 007. This doesn't mean she will be James Bond, but it just means that in the film, she'll be taking his job at MI6 as 007 when he goes into retirement. The next Bond to take over from Daniel Craig is yet to be announced. I have covered a lot so far, so I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. Next episode, I will be going into things in more detail, but a lot happened last year, so I just wanted to summarise everything important, rather than express my opinion too much. But I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and I know a lot of people think 2020 was a terrible year, but hopefully I've been able to remind you of the good things that happened in 2020. And there were a lot of them. If you have listened to this all the way to the end, thank you so much. And if you did enjoy the episode, it would really mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the podcast. And if you really liked it, then you could leave a review. Both of those things are completely free and it just helps me make more episodes and expand the podcast community. Okay, I won't take up any more of your time. This is the Wizards Weekly Catch-Up. I'm Dara SL, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.